Well, hey everybody, how you guys doing? Well, it's the day after I posted a video about the reversal process and some of the results I've recently had. This was the video where I did some of those owl figurine pictures and I had some of this brown kind of blotchy staining on the pictures and I was telling you guys that I thought maybe the problem was my peroxide was getting close to being exhausted. Well, I started going back through my protector sheets of previous experiments and I came across this breakthrough that I totally forgot about. And the breakthrough was to do the citric acid and then peroxide and then go back and do the citric acid and peroxide again face down in both of those steps. And I decided I need to redo this experiment. So I poured up the same chemistry that I was using yesterday and I set up the same owl figure, slightly different compositions. And man, I had perfect results. Darn near perfect. And also no scratches. I figured out where my scratches were coming from. I have been watering my tree with my rinse water and I was using the garden hose, sticking the garden hose inside the little container where the prints are at. And it turns out that the little metal ferrule, the fitting on the end of the garden hose, I was just jamming down into the bottom of the container. The idea to get the water coming up from the bottom to flush out the impurities. Well, that metal end of the hose of course was scratching the prints so i was a lot more careful and with the rinsing today no scratches and really good results let's take a look at them shall we my little folder here of photographic experiments of course i think all photographs are experiments anyway we go back to september 1st that is uh three weeks ago and i have done these two shots of my polaroid 800 camera in the reversal process and uh, this was the first real time where I discovered doing the double citric acid peroxide steps repeating them and then of course yesterday's results that I shared with you on the video less than great because of the blotchiness and also my carelessness about the emulsion and having it scratched and uh, in spite of that though the selenium toning was kind of uh, fun and it was a good result so Let's go look at this. So this first one, these are both 45 second exposures. And man, is this a cool picture. I love this one. I actually got the back of the chair. So this is sitting on the cushion of a wicker chair in my patio room, the owl is. And the horizon line that kind of cuts behind, cuts across behind the middle of the owl's face is slightly crooked because of the shape of it. And I didn't really see that all too clearly on the ground glass. but really nice results. I love the tones from this, the, the color from the selenium toning. The highlights have kind of a, a tan color, I guess. And, the, and the, of course the shadows are that nice selenium toned look. And then the second one I did, I changed the composition slightly. I raised the camera up a few inches and aimed it down a little bit more. So it put the owl's face more in the rule of thirds. Again, that horizon line from the back edge of the cushion out of focus is still cutting across the owl's face. A little bit crooked, but in spite of that, I really like the results. There is a very slight amount in the lower right corner of this one, a very slight amount of kind of a tan color. And I think that is from, I think this one, the second one I did, I think I only did 30 seconds in the citric acid. Maybe my agitation was not good or something, but anyway, there's very slight hint of it, but I think if you're looking at it in person, it's really not objectionable at all. The uh, image you're looking at was shot off of my phone, and you probably see a little bit more of that because the contrast shows up a little bit better. But anyway, I'm excited about the results, and it just shows, again, that some of these steps are crucial. Uh, I think Processing the pictures, the prints face down in the citric acid and the peroxide are very important, especially the peroxide steps, because there's a lot of particulates, stuff coming off the surface I can see. And I think if you leave it face up, that kind of blocks the action of the chemistry. So face down is important. I actually processed everything face down except for the second development after the flash of light. I did it face up just to see it come up. And the flash of light I did, uh, the first one here was 15 seconds, the second one was maybe 25 seconds. I haven't really seen any objection from 
excessive amounts of exposure on the second exposure because really the whole idea of the second exposure is to totally expose any remaining silver halide in the emulsion. So if you overexpose beyond what it needs, it's not really going to hurt it. It's not going to do anything extra. So anyways, in spite of today's successful results and a reinforcement of the findings that I had discovered a couple weeks ago about double processing the citric acid peroxide steps and then the finding from yesterday about the advantage of selenium toning them, I know there's going to be a point where the peroxide is going to be saturated with silver and or the peroxide loses its oxidation capability in which case and when that happens I'll have to recycle it as I do used fixer uh, but I, thus far I don't see any evidence of any sediment like the dark silver oxide sediment that you see in fixer used fixer I don't see any of that no, any evidence of it so I don't know how long the capacity of this uh, bottle is gonna last for but it's I was purchased that bottle about a year almost a year and a half ago maybe and it's about halfway used and what's left of it I've been repeatedly using for this reversal process so uh, there's gonna be a point where it's gonna be, have to be replaced but I still have good results thus far and uh, that excites me so in yesterday's video I also made mention of the fact that using this Fujinon lens wide open at f 5.6 under shaded daylight my patio room basically with indirect sunlight coming in I had to use a 45 second exposure which is way too long for seated portraits of people you just can't get people to sit still that long even with a head brace I don't think um, but I think it's still possible to do portraits uh, with a people in bright daylight because I think my exposure times were on the order of maybe f four seconds or something like that a four second exposure in bright daylight I think you could do it with a head brace but the thing about bright sunlight of course is it's really harsh harsh lighting and you have to expose for the highlights you have to angle the subject so the light is coming from a side view a little bit and you get a little bit of shading on the features of the face maybe so it'll take some experiments to be able to do seated portraits in direct sunlight it'll be fun to try but it's going to be a challenge it's it'll be kind of like i think using a wet plate collodion or for portraits which people that do that in the studio environment they usually use really high powered strobe lights so uh, I don't have any of those but uh, yeah that's what it would take to do portraits which is really what I'd like to do eventually and it's also worth pointing out for you guys who are interested in trying to reproduce this process for yourself that I didn't do any fixing at all on these prints today uh, and again my theory is that there's no residual unexposed silver halide left in the paper so it's not going to get dark over time I don't think so why expose the paper to fixer chemistry that you're just gonna have to rinse out later so no fixer it was developer uh, for two minutes used paper developer 30 second water rinse a minute in the citric acid a minute in the peroxide a minute in citric acid a minute in peroxide 30 second rinse a bright flash of light like one of these 100 watt uh, LED bulbs within about a foot of it or so and then a two minute development under regular lights and uh, rinse for a couple minutes and then I selenium toned them for five minutes or until the color of the shadows turned out to be the way I wanted and then an archival wash for about 20 minutes so that was it uh, it's a cool process and it looks like uh, if I follow my rules that I've discovered with this process and not forget them it looks like it's working for me uh, thus far and it looks like the chemistry of the specifically both the citric acid and the peroxide are holding up they do last a while which surprises me so anyways really cool results I do love this semi matte finish RC paper from freestyle photo their Arista grade 2 really cool stuff I like the look of it and uh, yeah it's pretty pretty cool going forward with this process I really think that I want to start doing some 8 by 10s with the same paper but the challenge is going to be the only 8 by 10 camera I have is a homemade big sliding box camera you might have seen me uh, feature on this uh, channel a couple years ago 
And more importantly, the limitation is the lens. I'm using a single element meniscus lens. It's actually a close-up lens for a 35 millimeter camera, one of those screw-on things. It's like a magnifying lens in meniscus. If you operate it wide open, it's fairly fast, but it's also pretty blurry around the edges. It really doesn't get sharp uh, from center to edge until you stop it way down to somewhere around f40 or f50. With these exposure times, an f5.6 taking 45 seconds in the indirect daylight, it would take several minutes probably in the 8x10 to do that same uh, exposure at f50 or whatever. So I'll probably try to operate that lens more like wide open. But we'll see. I don't know how funky it's going to be, the off-axis uh, aberrations from that single element lens. They're, they're kind of cool if you do the right subject matter. Maybe a portrait. But again, as I said earlier, portraits with this process, you need a lot of light. I've had a few inquiries over the last few months about this. The uh, arrow, the YouTube logo, and what's that all about? Why is it backwards, Joe? Don't you know the play arrow is supposed to point to the right? Well, it's my little joke. I think the f when I first made this, and I put it up, I think, backwards at one point, and then I noticed it, and I decided, well, it's pointing at me. <laughs> so... I'm sort of pretending like it's not really a play button, it's really an arrow pointing at me, the subject. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. Those predate YouTube by decades. It's kind of an industry standard. You notice on this micro cassette player, this realistic, it has the same kind of triangular play logo and the double triangular fast forward and rewind buttons and the square stop button and the little up arrow eject button and the round or circular record button. When you see all those symbols in uh, on software, on internet stuff, electronic media, just know they predate the internet. Those symbols have been around for a long time. This is the Sony TC-18. This is from the late 60s or early, early 1970 or 71. Oh yeah, look, it has the same arrows. Those arrows must go back to the 1960s. That's a long time ago, a long time before YouTube. And then the other thing is, you might notice I do wear occasionally t-shirts with some interesting artwork. And this is from uh, a local coffee shop chain called Satellite Coffee, handcrafted since 1998. This is kind of a robot espresso machine, multi-armed robot espresso machine t-shirt. Uh, Satellite was selling these uh, a couple years ago and I got one. I don't think they sell them anymore, but it's a cool shirt. And then I also have the other shirt that you might have seen me wear from uh, Winning Coffee. And they're out of business and they don't sell those shirts anymore. So I've decided I'm probably not going to wear that too much. I don't want to wear the shirt out. It's getting kind of rare, right? What do you guys do with rare t-shirts that you don't want to wear out through excessive laundering? What do you guys do? But anyway, that's the reason about the shirts. I like funky t-shirts and about the arrow pointing at me. Stay creative, guys. Until next time, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.